Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 3 of our Blender Master Course series Editors, Workspaces and Themes. Do watch the last 3 chapters of this Master Course series if you haven't already watched them. In the previous chapter we tried to understand the interface of Blender by moving or basically changing different things and we ended up making this simple looking cube in our first practical session. And now let's start a new chapter. Our first topic for today will be understanding editors in Blender. So as we even discussed in our previous chapter, editors are basically individual windows or the panels which together make up this Blender interface and they basically contain the controls to edit different types of data in Blender. Now the default screen arrangement that is the arrangement which appears as default whenever you open a new file, it comprises of these four panels or editors namely the 3D viewport editor, outliner editor, properties editor and timeline editor. But these are not the only 4 editors available and to access more you can click this icon. This is called the 3D view editor icon. It's available in all the editors with different images but it's the first icon of your editor and if you left click on this icon, it displays a list of all the editors which you can access. For example, if I select this image editor, it will open up here and here you can open images while working on your blender file. This helps you when you are working on some blender project and you need to see some reference images. By clicking on image and then open you can open your required file. Since it's gonna be a long but a complete master course, all of these editors that you can see here, these will be covered in detail in our upcoming chapters. The next thing is resizing editors. So sometimes you might feel that you need to change the size of your editor. So for that just place your mouse cursor on the editor or the panel border and it will change to a double headed arrow like this. Now click left mouse button and drag it to resize accordingly. So editors can be changed from here or here depending upon the editor that you want to change and also they can be divided or basically be splitted. Now to split an editor place your mouse cursor in the corner of any editor panel and it changes to a white cross like this. Now click right mouse button and you can split it in two ways vertical split and horizontal split. If you select vertical split you can drag this line as per the area you need for the new editor and click left mouse button to finalize. It will duplicate the same editor panel and then you can change the editor type from here and adjust the size accordingly like this. Now for horizontal split you can place your mouse cursor here and click horizontal split and drag the line as per the area required for your new editor. And this will create a new editor here, it will duplicate the same and you can change it from here to like timeline. Now the timeline that was here initially will appear here as well. And you can resize it to see it completely. Like this. Now to close an editor panel, you basically have to join two editor panels together and make them into a single one. So for this, place your mouse cursor in between any of the two editors and then right click and select join areas. Then you have to drag this arrow into the editor that you want to close and click left mouse button to finalize. Now the two editors are joined into a single one and the other editor is closed now. And now we'll try to do the same thing with this one as well. Right click and select join areas. Then drag the arrow to the one you want to close and it will close. Same with this one and then we'll resize it. And now in order to make this similar to the default arrangement in Blender, we'll try to add outliner editor up here. And for that, we'll click horizontal split here and we'll split it like this and change this to outliner editor. And now we'll resize it so that it looks similar to the default arrangement in Blender. So this was all about editors. Now Blender also gives you the option of hiding some objects in your 3D viewport. And this will be beneficial when you work on projects like this where you basically have a lot of objects in your 3D viewport and if all of them are shown together it might create some confusion for you. To hide any object you need to select that object and then in the outliner editor click this eye shaped icon against its name and this will hide the object and clicking it again will show the object in the 3D viewport. There is also a shortcut available to hide objects and that is to press H in your keyboard. And this will hide the object and to unhide or show it again then you have to click alt plus h. Now the next thing to explore is user perspective and orthographic view. So by default blender opens in this user perspective view that means that there is no visible end of this 3d viewport. 
Even if you see it from different angles, it seems as if this viewport is infinitely large and so it's a perspective view. And to switch to another view that is the orthographic view, press 5 on your numpad. Now this is the orthographic view in which the viewport visibly ends here and it seems to make a right angle with the face. So this was the difference in the perspective view and orthographic view. For most of our time we will be working in perspective view only so let's return back to the perspective view by pressing 5 on a numpad again. Now one way to navigate or move around the viewport in Blender is to press the middle mouse button and to navigate like this. But there's one more way in which the navigation is similar to the walk style navigation in games such as GTA. So if you play GTA with a keyboard you will use the WASD keys to move your character. Similarly in Blender there's a special mode in which you can use the WASD keys to move around the 3D viewport and it is known as walk navigation. To access it click on the view menu here and then go to navigation and select walk navigation from here. Now you can use your WASD keys to move around the 3D viewport. W is for moving forward, A is for moving towards left, S is for backward movement and D is for moving towards right. And in order to increase the speed of your movement you can press shift key simultaneously along with WSD keys. Shift W will move it forward in a quick way. Similarly shift S, shift A, shift D. And the view will be finalized with the left mouse button click. And always remember that when you have to cancel your navigation like you are navigating like this. Then before finalizing press the right mouse button click and it will return back to the position where you were before navigating. All these things will get in your mind when you actually practice Blender over time. So if possible do try to practice all these shortcuts and modes and try to explore them after this chapter ends. Also I can assure you that following this master course series will brushen up your skills and at the end of this course you will be in a position to make everything that your mind can think of in Blender. Now coming back to our chapter the next topic is workspace. So workspaces are basically the screen arrangements of editors um, for working at specific tasks. Like there is a separate workspace for modeling things, a separate one for sculpting, shading, animation etc. And these can be accessed from here in the upper screen header where you can see layout, modeling, sculpting. These are the workspaces in Blender. The default one is the layout workspace. If we click on modeling or sculpting, we observe that the workspace layout changes and since right now we haven't done modeling, sculpting, shading etc. So we won't be discussing each one right now. But whenever the upcoming chapters will be released, we would be understanding about all these different tools as well. Now we'll return back to our default workspace. Now we'll see these tools which are known as the widget panel in Blender. If you click here and move around your cursor then you will navigate in the 3D viewport. So this is another way to navigate the 3D viewport. And this one is for zooming in and out in the 3D viewport, which you can also do using your scroll wheel. Then this one is to move around the view like this. And as discussed earlier, you can also do this using the shift plus middle mouse button. Now this camera icon is for toggling the camera view. And the shortcut for this as discussed earlier was the zero. You can toggle the camera view using the zero key in the numpad. Now, this one is for switching between the perspective and orthographic view. If you click this, the view changes from perspective to orthographic and if you click it again, it returns to the perspective view again. And the shortcut for this is 5 in the numpad. The next thing is the preference editor, which is basically like the settings menu for Blender. To open it, click edit from here and select preferences. And here you can basically change the settings in things such as interface, themes, viewport, navigation, input, uh, saving different files and installing add-ons. There will be a separate chapter in this course which will make you understand what exactly the add-ons are and which ones are the best for Blender. Also it is advisable not to change any preference settings on your own unless and until you know the exact consequences of that change. Whenever it is required to change anything I will share that with you in the upcoming chapters. But yes for today's chapter we will be exploring the themes in the preference settings. We will try to change the color of this 3D viewport background. For this with the theme selected here, we will go to 3D view here, 3D viewport and scroll down and select theme space and scroll down again and select gradient colors here. Now click the gradient high off option here to display this color picker circle. Now to increase the brightness, you can use this brightness slider here. 
and this will increase the brightness of the colors now you can select any of the colors like if we move it to green the color of the 3d viewport editor will also change you may set any color that you like and you can adjust the brightness from here now you can also change the cosmetic appearance of your interface that is the theme of your interface as per your preference to do that in the same themes preference scroll up and and select this presets drop down menu you may select any of these themes that you would love to see while working on your blender file or blender project and the default one in blender is the blender dark theme also blender gives you the option to download themes from some external websites and to install them you can click this install button and select the file but for most of the people it's not required because blender already gives you a good range of themes to choose from so choose the theme that suits you the best and now we'll close these preference settings and this brings us to the end of this chapter our next chapter is going to be the chapter number 4 navigating and saving in blender Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.